Hi, it's Jay Manson from uh, Some Wild Things. Uh, me, Deanna, and Jeremiah are out in, on a mountain uh, somewhere in Kelowna. I don't know exactly where we are um, directionally or in any case, but anyway, we're up here. And we've never been up here before. I I have a friend who said that there's some nice trails that I should check out up in this area. Um, I don't know. I didn't get any specifics. I haven't even gone on a hike with my friend yet to actually be able to explore them for myself. But he said there's some nice ones. And so I figured this would be a nice area to check out. Um might be some opportunities for bushcraft, but certainly a lot of foraging opportunities. So we're going to see what we can find. Plastic bag. A lot of cedars up here. This is nice. Oh, it's actually really pretty. Too. Getting our toilet paper. Sorry. Forgot my toilet paper bag, so... One more. All right. Just an extra, because there's three of us, so. Perfect. Oh, wait, wait, oh, we did. Should have brought my little phone tripod, actually, for oh, filming. I know, I don't know why I didn't bring my tripod. I should get one of those. Yeah, it's actually really, really hard. So you can set it up there. Can... Make these videos easier. Bam. Gunzo. A little nook in there. A little nook. Oh, that was probably a gunshot. Probably a gunshot. Get raided by rednecks out here. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll have nothing they want. You don't have beer. Yeah, we don't have beer. Or bullets. <laughs> <laughs> or country music. Yeah. Or, country music, yep. <laughs> or any type of loud machinery, so. <laughs> mm. Damn. Miss too. Harvesting right, some golden rod. Ooh, it actually smells really nice. There's actually a decent amount here. Something I haven't used really yet. It's a golden rod for herbs. Yeah, I've been hearing about its medicinal value and whatnot. It's just, I've never, I've actually just watched a video about it yesterday. Yeah, and I've seen no nothing yet. <laughs> All I know is it's a good herb to have in the garden around this time of year because there's not a lot of flowers this time of year. So it's yeah. a good one to have to attract pollinators. Like these guys. It's all right. Thimbleberries. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah? It's like something that'll put a beard on your face. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think they'd make really great tarts. Because they have that perfect amount of, like, sour and sweet. I think it'd be good. What are these ones, Jerry? We're up here on the logging road. Peas, Doing right? two videos at once. Type of <laughs> For the channel. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find over here? Peas. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's the. Uh, what's it called? Vetch. 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 <laughs> um, some vetch are edible. I think some are not, so I don't know if this kind is edible, but they're in the pea family, as you can tell by the peas. So. Big brain, big brain. And thimbleberries. Yum, yum. There's a lot of the golden. That's a good time to harvest the golden rod, too. Right, so that's golden rod, and golden seal is different? Yes. Yep. Golden yes. seal is a root. Although they, they work in similar ways, though. Yeah? Yep. Okay, I was going to say, I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> You're being filmed for the audience, so. Oh. You know what Whoops. Sound as smart as possible, I guess. I don't well, know. Well, you know, I don't want to sound like a complete dope head. 
I don't want to take all the food from the bears. There's a whole either. bunch of thimble bears up here. I know. Right? Mm. That's like what a lady said when we were at Cal. She's like, leave some for the bears. And I was like, I don't know. I was thinking I'm going to pick every single one <laughs> and leave none for the bears. You know, I'm just going to chop down all these bushes. Yeah, like, and then we went back and I was like, damn, those bears, they didn't even eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> but I got some self heal seeds. So I'm going to try to keep them. I got some little vials somewhere. So, there we go. Wait, there's one. I'm going to see if I can grow these in the, uh, the herb garden. There we go. Seeds might. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Signature thistle thing. <laughs> Hello, this is Ponderosa Pine. It's very good for tea. Tastes a lot like Christmas. It's really good if you have scurvy. <laughs> Most people don't anymore, but if you have scurvy, C. just eat an orange. <laughs> just once yeah, in your life. Orange. Just eat a freaking orange if you have scurvy. Like But this contains like how much times more vitamin C than an orange? Way Cedar's more. really good too. I always prefer to work with cedar, but seeing as pine is such an abundant species mm -hmm. oh, and pine Douglas, works too Douglas fir literally tastes like Christmas trees yeah I know <laughs> I love it. oh yeah yeah that's a smoothie wit and happen right I know why go to the store and get you raspberries when you can get them right from the mother herself yeah not only is it way way better for you but it's also free oh here comes our noise maker oh, oh. Rednecks. <laughs> By the way, barefoot is the only way to go in the forest. I don't know what you weird people do when you're walking around with shoes on. A bunch of freaking <laughs> aliens from outer space. The ground's gonna kill you or something. <sighs> ready to go all right so right here we have a sarsaparilla plant which is in the same family as ginseng but they usually just have a just a stem coming up and they branch out into three like that they usually always have three and sometimes they'll have a little bundle of berries but um they usually always have either five leaves or three, but usually five, and it comes out like that. There's another small one right here, and right here. You can see that it comes out in the threes like that. And sarsaparilla, the roots are what's used in root beer. It's wild sarsaparilla. It's a bit different than the domesticated varieties, but wild sarsaparilla. Down there <laughs> is uh, Devil's Club. And the uh, Native Americans used to make staffs out of them. Usually, usually the shamans, because there's believed to have very strong spiritual uh, powers, usually to uh, prevent like uh, evil spirits and stuff. It's to keep them away. So they were usually harvested around Halloween when the veils are thinnest. Yeah. So what we got here are more of the fairy bells, which have edible berries they're they're slightly sweet but they have a lot of big seeds in them i know the natives didn't really regard them highly they would just collect them along with whatever else they were collecting but they wouldn't go out to just collect fairy bells because they don't come in abundance much but you can eat them you can eat the berries mm -mm. they just have lots of big seeds in them <laughs> Whoop. 
kind of look like tiny little reddish pumpkins. Mm hmm. Literally. It kind of tastes like a melon, too, actually. A little melon essence almost. I'm going to harvest these. This is the machine that will soon. Out in the oh, wild. Oh. Hello. Just a giant excavator. Look at the size of this. I could go hang out in here. I'm like, look at me! I could try. Well, I'm gonna get dirty. Because I would Crikey. Hey, if you didn't have a shelter, <laughs> <laughs> this might work. Just put some boughs in here. In like ideal weather, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we made it into the cedar jungle. It's my favorite spot is in the cedars. Yeah. The size of this dead one though. Yikes. This is gorgeous in here. This is a perfect camp area. And Oh, right at my feet. Some mushrooms going. He's a little mushy. Oh, is that an artist conch, dude? I've been just a little mushy. Artist conchs. We're completely out. We're complete. It's nice and fresh too, so it'd be a good one to harvest. We actually, this is a good mushroom to make medicinal tea out of. And let's pull it off here. Let's take the one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, you yeah. can see why they call it artist conch. Because you can literally make art. Yeah, people it. literally do full on art with these. But we're out of artist conchs now for our t medicinal tea. So artist conchs, in case people don't know, there's a there's a very wide and very specific um, array of uh, medicinal qualities within the artist conch. Uh, most of whom are can have a lot of um, antibacterial properties and, and uh, cancer fighting properties and as well as an extraordinary high amount of um, immune system boosting properties so usually most conch mushrooms have very similar medicinal properties like that and um, in, in some countries like especially in Asian countries uh, they have been being used actually uh, the mushrooms have actually been used uh, for treatment for people who are going through chemotherapy or experiencing any kind of um, uh, cancer, battling cancer, cancer treatment of any kind, because it actually helps the immune system to fight off the cancer like it should be doing naturally. Exactly. So essentially, if you have a tendency of cancer in your background, in your family history, I might just recommend you to go out and look for conch mushrooms. Do your research. You and don't if, you, if you're not a forest, <laughs> if you're not a forest dweller, go to Nature's Fair or some like Whole Foods or something like that, and find yourself some chaga mushroom or turkey tail. Exactly. Good stuff. See what else we can find. Human food. Not from the wild, though. Yeah, I know. You won't find this in the wild. Well, you would, just on here. Not in the cedar jungle. Definitely not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> let me go get one, too. And then, <laughs> no. There will be another bushcraft video coming somewhat oh! soon. <laughs> This one will be with um, me included. Yeah. So. Maybe me, you, and Raven, or just me and you. Stay tuned for that. Tribal bushcraft.